This Suzuki Vitara may be one of the older designs in the compact SUV segment, but it now has one of the most modern engines with mild hybrid electrification added to a redesigned K14D series version of the company's 1.4 litre booster jet petrol power plant. The brand has also taken the opportunity to add extra equipment and standardize a range of camera safety features. And unusually in this class, there's still the option of a proper lockable four-wheel drive system if you want it. Time to take a second look at this car. Electrification is these days so important to automotive makers that developing it takes precedence over creating new designs. For proof of that, take a look at the Suzuki Vitara and more specifically this one, the Vitara Hybrid. The current fourth generation LY series design has been around since 2015. Uh, five years on from that, we might have expected an all new version given the overriding importance of the compact SUV segment just at present. Instead, Suzuki has diverted its budgetary spend beneath the bonnet, redesigning its core 1.4 litre booster jet petrol turbo engine and adding sophisticated 48 volt mild hybrid tech into it as part of a move that sees every one of the company's models being in some way electrified. The result is the Vitara hybrid model that we're looking at here, and it was launched in the spring of 2020. We ought to put the latest instalment of this car into some kind of historical context. Uh, the Vitara model line is now over three decades old. It's provenance dating all the way back to the launch of the cute first generation version in 1988. In 1998, a second generation design pushed a little further up market as did the third generation JT series Grand Vitara model of 2005. A decade later, that Mark III version's 1.6 litre petrol and diesel engines were carried forward with merely minor modifications into this fourth generation LY series car, which was updated in 2018 with the booster jet turbo engine technology that's now received a dose of electrification here. Suzuki's uh, also taken the opportunity to plump up equipment levels and to further upgrade safety. And as before, this remains one of the few cars in the class to offer four-wheel drive as an option. It all sounds quite promising, particularly when you take into account that the Vitara value proposition continues to look competitive when you consider just what you're getting here. Time to put this car to the test. The Vitara has a slightly more athletic feel than Suzuki's other compact SUV in this segment, the S-Cross, and that hasn't been appreciably diluted by the marginal extra weight of the additional electrified tech. You may already be familiar with the way that mild hybrid engines work, but just in case not, here's a quick recap. Now basically, energy that would otherwise be lost when braking or cruising uh, off throttle is harvested via a kinetic energy recovery system and it's sent to a small lithium ion battery that here has been placed beneath the front passenger seat. Now this is used to drive a belt-driven ISG unit, an integrated starter generator, and power the engine's stop-start system. Suzuki's old 12 volt mild hybrid SHVS package didn't do a lot more than that, but this improved 48 volt uh, setup can also deliver a couple of other important benefits. The first is something quite unusual amongst current mild hybrids, and that's the ability for this Suzuki to idle and even coast on full electric power, although only below 10 miles an hour. The other fresh benefit here is something uh, supposed to be now quite common amongst mild hybrid models, and that's the ability to torque fill under acceleration to compensate for turbo lag, which is just as well because this Vitara Hybrid's new K14D series 1.4 litre booster jet petrol engine has less power than the unit of the same size it replaces, 127 bhp instead of 138. Still, if you're quick with the six-speed manual gear shift, uh, there's no long and auto gearbox option, the 62 miles an hour sprint takes 9.5 seconds en route to 118 miles an hour. That's probably as fast as you'd ever want to go in a car of this kind. 
The mild hybrid engine delivers a fraction more torque than the conventional booster jet unit it replaces, up from 230 to 235 newton meters, although not enough to facilitate any kind of serious towing capacity, which is rated at a very modest 1.2 tons. Uh, robbed of the chance to improve that by specifying a diesel engine in this model, caravanners are now likely to look elsewhere, but their absence may be compensated for in the sales figures by people switching into this Vitara from more dynamically orientated small SUVs. Suzuki knows how to do sporty cars, and if you doubt that, then ask your dealer to let you have a go in the brand's Swift Sport hot hatch. So, perhaps it's not surprising that, as we suggested earlier, this Vitara is one of the more engaging small SUVs that you could consider. Most of that is due to this car's relatively light weight, and that is a relatively recently introduced Vitara attribute. Prior to the launch of this fourth generation design in 2015, uh, previous models lugged around a clunky old ladder frame chassis. This one gets a much more sophisticated TECT, or Total Effective Control Technology Platform, which uses lots of high strength, lightweight steel. Now, that's a key reason why the Suzuki feels relatively agile by class standards through the bends. Uh, this car's eager to change direction and body roll is decently controlled. You even get a welcome bit of initial bite from the steering when first you turn in, although unfortunately the response does get a bit vaguer the faster you go. Traction is good too, and on that subject it's worth pointing out one of this car's key selling points, the fact that it's one of the few models in the segment that can be ordered with four-wheel drive, and that's Suzuki's all-grip system. Now this isn't the kind of uh, permanent 4x4 setup that allowed small Suzuki SUVs of the past to penetrate some of the least friendly parts of the planet. Instead, it's one of those lighter part-time systems that are more appropriate for muddy car parks and slippery tarmac terrain, using an electronically controlled clutch pack that distributes uh, drive between front and rear under orders from the circular drive mode select dial down by the gear stick. As with most such systems, this one will leave you in front wheel drive most of the time unless a lack of traction is detected, in which case those rear wheels will be dialed in. Uh, that's what happens if you leave the whole thing in its set and forget auto mode. There are three other options though. Sport is meant for more spirited driving and in this mode up to 20% of torque is diverted to the rear wheels for livelier handling. And that leaves us with uh, the two options intended for the kind of more serious off-road use that this car will rarely see. Uh, yes, you do get capable approach and departure angles, 18.2 and 28.2 degrees respectively, but the relatively modest ground clearance of 185 millimeters will make it difficult to get anywhere that you could realistically put those to the test. Should you manage that though, uh, two final drive mode select settings are waiting. Uh, the main off-piece setting is to twist the rotary dial into snow. That name's a bit misleading actually because it's a, a mode intended for all kinds of slippery, muddy conditions. Now here, the system will stay in four-wheel drive all the time, constantly varying the power split front to rear depending on the conditions. Now that'll be ideal for the next time you have to venture out on an icy, frozen morning. And finally, there's the lock setting, and that's activated by pushing the button to the left of the drive mode select dial. Now this splits the torque equally front to rear to give you the maximum chance of extricating this car from somewhere that you probably shouldn't have ventured with it in the first place. To be honest though, venturing into the wilds isn't really the Suzuki's thing, but the fact that we can even talk about it references this Vitara's position as a model that's a touch more capable than your average small SUV. And that's something that'll deliver a bit of extra peace of mind when conditions turn treacherous. And on the subject of peace of mind, Suzuki has now engineered into this car a level of camera-driven safety equipment uh, that's difficult to better in this segment. It's all a sign of greater technological maturity of this model these days. It'll be interesting to see whether its appeal will be electrified as a result.
This may be a Vitara for a different age, but it's still very much a Vitara, even if it does only come with five doors these days. Visual ties with the 1988 original are maintained by the traditional clamshell bonnet, the front wing vents, uh, the rising feature lines of the flanks and the shape of the headlights. As you'd expect though, this is a more modern interpretation of what a car of this kind should be and the facelift tweaks made in 2018 to this fourth generation LY series model aim to emphasize this with a few carefully chosen styling updates. Most of those changes feature here at the front where the grille these days features six vertical slats uh, rather than the two horizontal ones that we used previously. Uh, the smarter design of these LED headlamps that flank it, uh, that represents the only visual change made to this hybrid engine model. This lower trapezoidally shaped central section to the bumper that was redesigned as part of the earlier midterm revisions that we just mentioned. And as before, uh, the sculpted fog light housings sit either side of it next to the fashionably vertical daytime running lights that add extra overtaking presence. Uh, from the side, little about this Mark IV model has changed since its original launch back in 2015. As before, most Vitaras will be ordered with a black pearl metallic contrast coloured roof, uh, while the lower part of the profile continues with uh, two key feature lines. One gently rises from front to rear at waist level, while the other lower crease begins at the front wheel arch and then curves up into the rear flanks. The entry level variant that uh, few consider gets 16 inch wheels, but otherwise this Suzuki favours 17 inch rims. They're offered either in this silver painted form or with a smarter polished finish. At the rear, the tail lamps feature a distinctive LED display and the lamp in the centre of this under bumper section is a reversing light. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, namely this model's stiff and sophisticated TECT platform, and that's designed around what Suzuki calls total effective control technology. Now this uses lots of high strength steel to make the structure very strong, but also low in weight. And that's the main reason why this Vitara weighs relatively little by class standards. Its curb weight hasn't been too significantly affected by the installation of that hybrid tech either. A front driven model like this one tips the scales at only 1,205 kilos. That's 45 kilos more than before. To give you some perspective on that, uh, a comparably sized Jeep Renegade with a smaller one litre engine weighs a full 115 kilos more. A uh, comparably sized Honda HRV is 135 kilos heavier than the Vitara. You still think all small SUVs are much the same? Time to take a seat up front. Now in this sector of the market, uh, manufacturers tend either to produce a properly premium feeling cabin, like that in say an Audi Q2 or a VW T-Cross, or they disguise the hard lower grade plastics necessary to achieve an affordable asking price with a kind of clever eye-catching design that you find in say a Nissan Duke or Renault Capture. Now here, Suzuki has tried a combination between these two approaches, which some might like, uh, but which for others will smack of being neither one thing nor the other. To try to improve the interior ambiance, uh, Suzuki upgraded the seat upholstery fabric across the lineup as part of the 2018 facelift and gave the upper part of the dashboard a smarter soft touch finish. And at least on this mid-range SZT model anyway, there are clear signs of aesthetic effort. The polished gray fascia panel, the white seat stitching, uh, the prominent round vents and the polished piano black finishing around the center stack. To be frank though, more than that was really needed if Suzuki was going to give this cabin any kind of really premium feel. Still, everything does appear to be of reasonable quality and the various fixtures and fittings appear to have been decently screwed together by the Hungarian factory. 
As for the kind of trendiness that buyers of small SUVs tend to want, well, that's not particularly evident with the mainstream spec levels, but your dealer will assure you that you can add it in. Uh, the trim around the gear stick, the rings around the air vents, uh, even the steering wheel and the gear knob, they can all feature a piano black finish, or if you're feeling really brave, all those areas can be trimmed in either orange, turquoise, white or red. Uh, such token efforts at trendiness will probably be enough to satisfy buyers shopping at the lower end of the range, but folk interested in the priciest SZ5 variant may be less forgiving. Virtually all models get the brand's usual smartphone link audio system, and that's accessible by this 7-inch centre screen. Unfortunately, the graphics of this monitor remain distinctly low rent, but it does include standard navigation and a reversing camera. Plus, it's been designed for easy use even if you're wearing gloves. Uh, there is an incorporated DAB audio system too, although it's a pity that you don't get proper knobs and buttons to control that. Still, the uh, steering wheel switch gear alleviates much of the need that you would otherwise have to stab away at the touchscreen. We like the driving position, it's commandingly high set for a start, and that isn't something that you can take for granted on small SUVs these days. All-round visibility is, as a result, very good, and that'll make it easy to transition into this car from a conventional small hatchback. Uh, we would like to have seen lumbar support at least as an option for the driver's chair, and that is a chair that could do with a bit of extra side bolstering, but it does position you comfortably in front of the reach and rake adjustable three-spoke wheel, uh, through which you view a clearly presented analog instrument cluster with polished silver bezels. Uh, this binnacle also features a central color display and that's positioned between the two main instrument dials. Now this will show you an impressive variety of options. The fuel economy stuff is really quite useful. There's now a hybrid energy monitor which shows the ongoing distribution of power uh, between the engine, the motor and the battery. But will typical Vitara buyers really need a g-force motion meter? All these curiously presented red and yellow power and torque readouts, or indeed the graphically streaming displays that show acceleration intensity and braking force in real time. Well, apparently Suzuki thinks they will. Oddment space is reasonably well provided for with properly sized door pockets, a decently shaped glove box, and a pair of cup holders in the center console next to the thankfully conventional handbrake. There's also a useful storage area in front of the gear lever that'll be ideal for your smartphone, especially as USB and 12 volt points lie close by. It's a pity though that there's no option to charge it out of sight in this deep storage box between the seats here. There is also an open cubby by the driver's right knee. Let's take a seat in the back. At its original launch, this fourth generation version of the Vitara was one of the larger small SUVs you could buy. It's 4,175 millimeter length, making it significantly longer than the segment leading Nissan Duke and Renault Capture models. Now that situation has now been reversed as rivals have been redesigned and they've become a little bigger. Now a Duke is actually now 45 millimeters longer than this Suzuki and the Capture is 52 mils longer. So are the dimensions here still enough to deliver a properly comfortable rear cabin? Well, you certainly couldn't call this rear seat spacious, but there is a bit more legroom than you might expect from a compact crossover. Uh, unfortunately, there's no opportunity to further improve things by either sliding or reclining this bench, but few contenders in this segment are for that kind of option anyway. Uh, headroom is fine, uh, providing you haven't chosen the top SZ5 variant, which gets a panoramic glass roof, and one of the largest it's possible to have in this class of car, and that does rob the ceiling of a few vital millimeters. It does at least fill what tends to be quite a dark area with welcome light. Apart from deep bottle holders in the doors, there's not much in terms of storage or connectivity provided for rear seat folk. Uh, there's no central armrest here, and rather meanly, Suzuki only provides a seat back pocket on the left-hand side. Uh, on the plus side though, this central transmission tunnel is usefully low, so if it is necessary to transport three adults back here, they won't be as cramped as they might be with uh, some rivals. 
We'll finish with a look at the boot. Uh, one of the advantages of choosing a car with mild hybrid technology rather than a full hybrid or a plug-in hybrid is that boot space won't be compromised by the underfloor rear placement of a hefty battery. Now that's certainly not the case here. Uh, lift the rear hatch and the class competitive 375 litre capacity that the previous non-electrified version of this car could offer has been preserved intact. If you need more, your dealer will direct you instead towards the brand's uh, alternative S-Cross hybrid and now that uh, offers a 430 litre capacity. Most will be well satisfied by what's on offer here though. The loading area can be quite wide too if you take out the borders to these corner compartments. Now Suzuki uh, hasn't forgotten to include a 12 volt socket that's here on the right and there is also a bag hook on the left. And there are tie down points too but unfortunately only two of them. Standard across the range is this handy adjustable height boot floor and there's more space beneath the cargo area base too but only because Suzuki declines to offer any kind of spare wheel and that's something that we always disapprove of in any car purporting to be any kind of SUV. Uh, if you need more room, uh, then pushing forward the 60-40 split rear bench uh, frees up 710 litres of space and the floor can be completely flat if you position the adjustable boot floor in its upper position. When we first sampled this fourth generation model back in 2015, it priced them around £14,000. And when we last tested this car, which wasn't that long ago, in early 2019, Vitara pricing started from around £17,000. Contrast that with the way that today's all hybrid model lineup was priced from launch from around £22,000. Quite a difference. Suzuki, of course, will suggest that that doesn't really give a clear picture of what's gone on here. As well as adding in this latest model's electrified tech, they've also upped equipment levels and they've standardised the portfolio of camera safety tech that back in 2015, Vitara buyers could only dream about. And the brand also points out that they no longer offer stripped out entry level variants and also that pricing for the plushest versions in the range has hardly risen at all. All of which is true, but there's still no doubt that with its higher asking figures, this Vitara must now compete in a different and a far more challenging part of the small SUV market segment than it did before. And it must do so without giving customers the options for diesel power and for automatic transmission that they had previously. Only this 129 PS 1.4 litre booster jet mild hybrid petrol engine is now offered, mated to a six speed manual gearbox and available across three trim levels. SZ4, this mid-range SZT model for which you'll need around £23,000 and top spec SZ5. There is though still the chance to specify four-wheel drive which is unusual in this class and that's Suzuki's on-demand all-grip system although only if you stretch to an SZ5 variant uh, which offers it for an extra £1,800. Mind you, from launch that took the asking price of this car to nearly £28,000. Enough on range structure, let's look at how the Vitara fits into the Suzuki SUV model range. Now you'd expect it to be pricier than the brand's entry level compact SUV, the Ignis, which is priced from around £14,000. That is, after all, a slightly smaller model. Using the same logic, you would also expect a Vitara to be a little cheaper than its fractionally larger S-Cross hybrid showroom stablemate. Well, Yes and no. An entry-level SZ4 trimmed S-Cross is actually £1,000 cheaper than an equivalent Vitara, but the SZT and SZ5 S-Cross variants are £1,000 more than their Vitara counterparts. Figure that out if you can. On to the value proposition offered by Vitara pricing in the small SUV segment. Now, as usual, for proper comparisons, you need to be comparing apples with apples by looking at B-segment super mini-based SUVs rather than the C-segment family hatchback-based crossovers, uh, which Suzuki more accurately targets with that slightly larger S-Cross model that uh, we just mentioned. So in other words, uh, if it makes more sense, uh, you need to be comparing a Vitara against cars in the Ford Puma segment rather than the Ford Cougar class. 
Having mentioned the Puma, uh, let's start our comparisons there because that Ford probably offers the most comparable package to what Suzuki has presented us with here, thanks to the fact that the Blue Oval brand is also championing mild hybrid engine technology. Now, it's surely no coincidence that this Vitara has been almost identically priced against its Ford counterpart. Of course, if you don't care much about electrification, there are lots of other B-segment SUV alternatives, uh, most of which are cheaper in the kind of entry-level form in which you'll generally get a less powerful engine than this Vitara Hybrid provides. And Nissan's Duke, for example, now that can only be had with a 1.0-litre, 117 PS unit. It's a similar story with other sector contenders like Hyundai's Kona, uh, Kia's Stonic, Vauxhall's Crosland X, uh, Citroen's C3 Aircross, say it's Arona, uh, Volkswagen's T-Cross, uh, Mitsubishi's ASX and Fiat's 500X. In all these cases there is a cheaper upfront asking price at the base of the range but there's less power too and there's no kind of hybrid tech. And of course bargain basement models in this class like Sangyong's Tivoli and Dacia's Duster, well they'll cost a lot less than a Vitara but inevitably you'll get a lot less technology too. If you are prepared to match apples more with apples, then Suzuki's pricing makes more sense. A comparable Renault Capture 1.3 TCE manual iconic model is priced within a few hundred pounds of a base spec Vitara hybrid, and a comparable Honda HRV will cost around about the same. Uh, a comparable Peugeot 2008 PureTech 130 or a base spec Jeep Renegade or a Mazda CX-30, they'll actually cost you quite a lot more than this Suzuki. If having considered all that, you conclude it is a Vitara hybrid that you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous this Japanese brand has been when it comes to that standard specification. Well, let's see. Uh, even the most affordable SZ4 variant gets alloy wheels of at least 16 inches in size, uh, silver roof rails, front fog lamps, climate controlled air conditioning with a pollen filter, cruise control with a speed limiter, electric mirrors, uh, an alarm immobiliser, front and rear electric windows and a decent quality four speaker CD stereo with Bluetooth, a USB input and steering wheel controls. In fact the only really key item that's missing is a proper spare wheel although that does at least free up some extra space below the useful adjustable height boot floor. Another £1,000 over SZ4 spec will upgrade your Vitara to the mid-range SZT trim you have here and get you smarter 17-inch silver-painted alloy wheels, rear privacy glass, uh, white stitched-up holstery and a rear parking camera that displays on a 7-inch colour infotainment touchscreen via which you can access satellite navigation and a smartphone link audio system with a DAB tuner. At the top of the range, the plushest SZ5 trim level gets the real niceties, uh, things like LED projector headlights, uh, suede seat fabric, keyless entry, auto headlamps and wipers, power folding mirrors, front and rear parking sensors, a couple of tweeters for the audio system and a polished finish for the 17-inch alloy wheels. There's also a huge panoramic sunroof that can fill the cabin with light and some key camera-driven electronic safety features that we'll cover off in just a minute. On to options and personalization. If you're a typical buyer and you've avoided entry-level trim, you'll probably like the idea of combining your chosen paint color with a contrasting black pearl metallic roof. There are various optional 17-inch alloy wheel designs too. And you might also want to consider one of Suzuki's exterior personalization packs. There's an urban design pack that's very much style-led, as is the Kuro style pack, which themes exterior elements in black and the Shiro style pack, which features exterior highlighting in black. Or you could go for a rugged design pack, which makes the car look a touch more purposeful with embellishments like body side mouldings and a red skid plate. 
You can add chrome trimming to the door handles, the front bumper corners, and around the tail lamps. There's a front grille trim set, an optional rear upper spoiler, and you can add silver skid plates to the front and to the rear. A side body molding set is optional, and you can add garnishing at the base of the front A pillars. Inside, there's the option of giving the cabin of your Vitara a rather more individual theme by color coordinating different elements, uh, the trim around the gear stick and the steering wheel, plus also the rings around the air vents at the top of the center stack. Uh, there's also a black door sill trimming set and the option of adding some leather finishing for the steering wheel and the gear shift gator. As for practicalities, well, there's a luggage area carpet mat and various cargo trays that fit into the boot. Uh, you can also add a protective strip that guards against scratches on the rear loading sill. A tow bar is, of course, optional. And you might want uh, roof bars. And you're going to need those for the optional roof box and for the roof carriers that your dealer can provide for bikes, skis and snowboards. Uh, there are the usual mud flaps and carpet mats, and you can have a protective cover for the rear bench to guard against pet damage. Finally, a word about something that shouldn't cost extra or need to be personalized, basic standards of safety. Now Suzuki agrees, hence a major change in strategy with this Vitara hybrid, and namely that's the standardization of Suzuki's suite of high-tech camera safety features. And they were previously available only if you stretched right up to the priciest variants at the very top of the range. Uh, all of this technology works using stereo cameras that are mounted either side of the interior rear view mirror, and that's combined with a laser sensor. Uh, there's autonomous braking, adaptive cruise control, rear cross traffic alert, a blind spot monitor, traffic sign recognition, uh, vehicle sway warning and lane departure warning. In case you're not familiar with this technology, let's quickly cover it. Suzuki's version of autonomous braking is what the brand calls dual sensor brake support. Now the system works at between three and 62 miles an hour, and if it detects a possible hazard, it'll alert you with visual and audible warnings. Should you not respond, then the brakes will be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident if it can't be avoided completely, that is. Uh, adaptive cruise control that uses a millimeter wave radar to automatically regulate your distance to the car in front at highway speeds. Uh, rear cross traffic alert that warns you of oncoming traffic if you're reversing out of a parking space. The blind spot monitor, that will warn you of oncoming vehicles when you're pulling off or when you're pulling out to overtake. Traffic sign recognition, now that pictures speed signs and then displays them for you on the dash. Vehicle sway warning, that detects weaving within a lane at over 37 miles an hour uh, caused by, say, drowsiness, and it sounds a warning buzzer to draw the driver's attention to it. And finally, lane departure warning, well, that works between 37 and 100 miles an hour to alert you to the fact that the car has drifted over the delineated road markings. It also incorporates a lane departure prevention function. Now that will gently steer you back to where you ought to be on the road. Safety here though isn't just about camera tech. Uh, Suzuki points out that this Vitara's design is fundamentally safe thanks to this fourth generation model's use of what the brand calls TECT or Total Effective Control Technology. And that's a design approach that's based around the extensive use of ultra high tensile steel for greater impact absorption. As a result, uh, back in 2015, this car was awarded a five star Euro NCAP safety test rating. Certainly helping in this regard is the fact that this model's standard safety tally uh, includes the driver's knee bag that many rivals make you do without. Uh, that's part of a kit list that includes twin front side and curtain airbags, Isofix child seat fastenings, a pedestrian friendly bonnet and a tire pressure monitoring system. As for passive electronic aids, well, as you'd expect, there's ESP stability control and ABS brakes with a brake assist function to help in emergency stops. There's also hill hold control to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. And on the all grip four wheel drive models, there's hill descent control to ease you down those slippery slopes.
Suzuki reckons that the 48-volt mild hybrid tech has delivered improvements in fuel economy and emissions of up to 20%, although because of the switch from NEDC to WLTP cycle readings, it's rather difficult to verify that claim with any real accuracy. The WLTP figures show a front-driven version of this model managing 49.7 mpg on the combined cycle and 128 grams per kilometer of CO2 emissions, which, by the way, almost exactly replicates what you get from a rival mild hybrid Ford Puma 1-litre EcoBoost MHEV. If you want this Vitara in top all-grip four-wheel drive form, it'll deliver 45.4 mpg and 140 grams per kilometer. As we said elsewhere in this film, it helps that this remains one of the lightest cars in the crossover class. Uh, the front-driven variant tips the scales at 1,205 kilos, and even the all-grip variant weighs in at only 1,275. It's also crucial that the booster jet power plant on which the brand has based its mild hybrid system was already pretty sophisticated. It uses a clever small displacement high-torque turbocharger and a variable fuel pressure control system which more accurately optimizes fuel injection to suit the way that you're driving. You can monitor your car's ongoing frugality via a graphical consumption readout that can be selected from the Instrument Binnacle's advanced multi-information display screen and this shows the fuel efficiency achieved over the last 15 minutes. Uh, you can also select an idle stop time readout and that will tell you how long the standard stop start system has been in operation for. It also tells you the total idle stop fuel save that has been generated although uh, we're not really quite sure why you'd ever want to know that. What else? Uh, well, an owner would be paying £165 of VED for the first year of ownership, £205 for the all grip, and £140 of VED from year two on. What about maintenance? Well, once your Vitara has been registered for three years, it'll become eligible for Suzuki's fixed price service package, and that will enable you to get servicing carried out for a single fixed price that will include parts, labor, and VAT too. Uh, there are around 180 Suzuki dealers in the UK, and they're noted for excellent customer service. You can also even out the cost of regular maintenance with a service payment plan, and that covers you for anything between between one and three garage visits. Now that could be important because this Vitara needs uh, relatively frequent garage visits every 12 months or 12,500 miles. On to insurance, uh, here you're looking at group 19A for the base hybrid model, the top SZ5 variant, that's rated at group 20A. As for residual values, well, they're forecasted to be acceptable by general class standards, provided you don't get too individualistic and personal with optioning up your car. The SZ5 variant, for example, will still, according to experts, be worth 43% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles when you come to sell it. Uh, like every Suzuki model, this one comes with a three-year, 60,000-mile warranty. Uh, the brand maybe wants to think about it extending that to match rivals in the class who are offering four, five and even seven year plans. Uh, there is also a year's breakdown cover and that extends across the whole of Europe and it includes roadside recovery. Now you can extend that yourself at extra cost via arrangement with your dealer. A 12 year anti-rust guarantee comes with the car too. There's still plenty to like about the Vitara. The light curb weight delivers agile handling. There's more space inside than you get with competitors like Nissan's Duke. And there are high standards of specification to sugar the showroom proposition. If you regularly drive on potentially treacherous roads, it'll also matter that this Suzuki is one of the few SUVs in the class that can be ordered with four wheel drive. But it's harder to like all of this quite as much at the significantly higher prices that Suzuki needs to charge to cover the expense of the mild hybrid tech, particularly given the fact that the 48 volt setup's effect on everyday running costs, although welcome, will be somewhat marginal. An outstanding tally of safety equipment is at least some compensation. 
The bottom line though is that this car is cleaner, more frugal and better equipped than most of its competitors and that suggests that this fourth generation LY series design still has plenty of life left in it yet. As we reach the 50th anniversary of the Suzuki 4x4, what we have here is much more of a Vitara from the modern world and a car that in this form is now just a little more than just a fashion statement.